Hello, and welcome to the build guide for an insanely strong melee arrow trap marksman character. The detonating arrow is a very powerful skill that causes you to shoot an arrow that explodes after a short delay to deal a lot of damage, and potentially trigger additional tendrils at nearby enemies. It is fairly strong on its own, but it can be much more powerful with a proper combination. When your explosive trap triggers, it will cause all nearby traps to also detonate, and shoot the detonating arrow. What makes this interaction particularly powerful is that you can throw multiple traps at once, far surpassing the amount of arrows you could shoot manually. You can expect at least 8 arrows triggered by a single trap throw. The Gelcor's Blast Knife is a unique dagger that converts the detonating arrow into a melee skill, offers an insane amount of damage for this skill, and lowers its mana cost. When you use two of them you will gain tons of damage and eliminate the mana cost completely, which is very important with such a high trigger rate. It is very easy to reach absurd amounts of damage, so you should focus mostly on your defense. You can achieve very high maximum health, which you will quickly recover thanks to the very high frequency of attacks via health leech. You will also have access to glancing blows, endurance, armor, and dodge. Here is what you can expect when you choose to play this build. It offers an extremely high amount of damage with easy access to scaling it further. You will have very fast movement speed thanks to an almost permanent haste buff with high effectiveness. You can easily reach high amounts of health paired with excellent health recovery and solid damage mitigation. A pair of commonly found unique daggers is the only requirement to start, and you can easily level up with bows. Of course, there are some disadvantages too. The damage is inherently delayed by throwing the trap and waiting for the arrow detonation. The sources of health leech are rather restrictive, it can be annoying to play without it. The only requirement is a pair of unique daggers which is necessary to eliminate the mana cost of your detonating arrows. Without them, you can use a traditional bow setup to level up, but it won't be as powerful. The unique amulets offer useful defensive bonuses, but are not required. The Gelcor's Blast Knife grants you insane amounts of damage for the detonating arrow and can remove the mana cost completely if you use two of them, but it also changes your arrow into a melee attack. It will still be triggered by your traps. At first, the Bleeding Heart is a great option to use. It will boost your throwing speed and grant you leech which is very important for your sustain. It is a common unique, so it is easy to get one with good legendary potential. Omnis is a very convenient amulet that can grant you over 300% total resistances, and boost the level of all your skills. It makes stacking health much easier, as you don't need to include that much resistance on your remaining gear. To improve your damage you should seek critical strikes, flat damage for melee attacks, and throwing speed. Do not get confused by throwing damage, it would only apply to explosive traps, not your detonating arrow. On your rings, it is essential to lower the throwing mana costs. Ideally, you should source your health leech from the stolen tithe relic, but it might be hard to find one with good modifiers at first. At later stages of the game improving your survivability is much more important. You should get as much health as possible, cap your critical strike avoidance, improve your dodge and armor, cover your resistance, and improve your endurance a bit. It is possible to opt for the ward version for better protection against single hits, but it has worse sustain and requires more unique items with good legendary potential bonuses to work. You can obtain a great amount of health with your stout Lagonian idols, which can also grant resistance or armor. If you prefer to get more damage, look for a critical strike chance or multiplier while dual wielding, armor shred chance, throwing speed for explosive traps, or some increases to your damage. You will spend most of your points in your starting rogue skill tree. The twin blade is the most important passive here, it allows you to use two melee weapons at the same time, at the cost of taking slightly increased damage. When dual wielding, you will gain all bonuses from each weapon. The evasion provides a significant damage reduction, but only when you are moving. Since you are using two daggers, the critical precision grants you a ton of critical strike chance. The sapping strikes are very important early on, as you can use your detonating arrow manually to refill your mana to throw more traps. The agility grants you haste on hit, which you will have almost permanently. 
The remaining passives will boost your glancing blow chance, dodge, health, or dexterity, you should pick them as you see fit. In the Blade Dancer passive tree, you will get even more chance to receive a glancing blow and a bit of movement speed. The Cloak of Shadows grants you a lot of glancing blow chance. On top of that, you can convert your dodge chance into even more glancing blow chance for a more reliable defensive layer via apostasy. The Shroud of Dusk grants you Dusk Shrouds when you are hit. You can opt for the Veil of Night if you often manually use the detonating arrow, which can happen at the early stages of progression. In the Falconer skill tree, you will gain minor bonuses to your attack speed, dodge, mana region, and damage. The Raptor's Wing grants you a chance to gain haste and improves your damage if you have that buff active. As you could notice, we didn't spend a single point on the Marksman Mastery, as most passives there do not work with daggers, but you still need that mastery to unlock the detonating arrow tree. When this trap explodes, it will trigger all nearby traps as well, and cause them to trigger the detonating arrow. The first trap doesn't trigger the arrow, you will have to throw multiple traps at once. The arrow traps is a fundamental notable that makes you trigger the detonating arrows. You will also need the trappas, corresponding conversion nodes, and clustered explosives for a total of 5 traps thrown at once. The Subtle Sabotage and Jelcor's Blueprint are very helpful in reducing the mana costs. The Trap Sprinkler and its upgrades grant a high chance to create a new trap upon detonation. The Detonating Arrow is your main source of damage. In this build, we convert it into a melee attack, but since it is triggered by traps you can essentially use it from a long distance. The Arcing Blast is very important notable for your clear speed, it adds the lightning tendrils to the explosion. The weak spot applies the critical vulnerability, making it much easier to cap your critical strike chance. The remaining notables are very straightforward, they just boost your damage, which is why additional levels from your daggers are very useful. The shift is a very useful movement skill that will swiftly move you toward a targeted location, as well as grant useful bonuses while doing so. The Shadow Slip makes you immune to damage during the shift. You will regain health and mana thanks to the Swift Recovery, Shadow Recupation, and Breathing Technique. The Molting will cleanse negative ailments on you. You will gain a burst of speed after using the shift thanks to the Momentum Notable. The Lasting Presence will create a Shadow Clone for a little bit of extra damage. You can also opt for Consumed by Shadow if you want to cull bosses at 16% of their health, but you would have to give up on healing or utility. The net is a powerful utility tool. Throwing the net buffs your DPS for a few seconds and slows and weakens your enemies. It can also be used to dodge incoming skills if you prefer it that way. The main reason to use this skill is the leading the hunt and quick throws notables. After using this skill you will deal 10% more damage and have a 20% increased throwing speed for 6 seconds. Entangled enemies will also deal less physical damage and have 3 stacks of frailty, which lowers their damage further. You can use the bold throw to remove the backflip or alter the jump behavior via other notables. The smoke bomb is a very powerful defensive ability. It creates a cloud of smoke that grants you offensive and defensive bonuses, as well as creates shadow clones every second that mimic your abilities. The Smoke Blades improves your melee damage with every second you stay inside the cloud. The Umbral Assault creates Shadow Clones to boost your damage output even more. The Moonlight Bomb grants you stacks of Silver Shroud that guarantee dodging incoming hits, even if you can't dodge naturally. The Throwing Health Leech available in the Black Sun is not that great, but it is better than not having any at all. You can also pick Lacking Resistance, improve your leech rate, or get plenty of Critical Strike Chance or Multiplier. The Blessing from the Age of Winter may be the only source of increased armor for this build, but you can also choose the Physical or Cold Resistance if you need them more. In the Spirits of Fire timeline, you can pick Fire Resistance, Armor, Dodge, or Endurance, depending on what you currently need the most. The Frailty on Hit is also a good option as you will apply max stacks nearly instantly on any enemy you encounter. The Reign of Dragons offers you the melee health leech which you need for your sustain if you don't have it elsewhere. 
You can also take the Poison, Necrotic, or All Resistances bonus. Critical Strike Avoidance is also very important if you don't have it capped yet. All options in the Ending the Storm timeline are related to Lightning, but you should aim for the Lightning Resistance Shred to significantly improve your damage against tanky enemies. And that's all you need to know about this very potent setup, if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments. Have a good day, and see you next time.